So I finally got around to making another video on the harpsichord project. I moved into a new place and I finally have the space and the time to work on it. So here you can see where I have the instrument set up. And I've gone through and I've marked out the second set of tuning pin holes. You see these two pencil lines and the um, repeated punch marks. And these are marked in such a way, they actually come from a, a Zuckerman drawing, um, but they're marked in such a way that these uh, strings will come off the tuning pins and clear the other uh, existing pinholes without interfering with them as they go from the pins and onto the nut. So on the back of the soundboard you see the two um, eight foot upper registers set here and down below you can see the lower register bolted into place. And looking through the uh, keyboard, well here is the lower register from the front view. So on the key bed right here I have all of the keys that are not damaged or cracked. Here's a bin of cracked keys from swelled key leads. Those will need to be repaired. And additionally, I have a bin here of non-cracked um, natural keys that need um, one of the two key leads drilled out to lighten the keys up to a modern, um, modern key weight standard. So this back weight right here is the one we're leaving. You can see there is some corrosion and they are swelled slightly. You can see that from the um, rubbing marks between the keys. So this one here is coming out. That one, uh, that one there is the, the back one is the one we're keeping. The front one is the one we're going to take out. This felt here, this red felt, is too short for the um, new registers. We'll be adding a two inch long piece of felt to those to account for the, uh, the double jacks. So we'll go through here and I'll just show you the process of drilling out these old um, leads. You want to drill fairly slowly. You want to be really careful about making dust with this stuff. There's lead, um, which is fairly poisonous, but there's also lead acetate, which is not only poisonous, but very soluble um, in water, and that can be fairly dangerous. So just be careful and try not to make too much dust if you're doing this. So I'm just going through and showing the process of um, drilling one out and then we will use a uh, reamer to go through and clean the rest of the lead out. It's fairly soft, it drills very easily and it, um, the reamer takes it out pretty well and you can do it slowly by hand and not run the risk of uh, damaging the wood too much. Trying to go very slow and not create an excessive amount of dust. It settles out of the air rather quickly just because of how heavy it is. So, um, But wearing a respirator and um, just making sure you really thoroughly wash your hands after touching any of this stuff is critical to avoid any risk of lead poisoning. There is a large side and a small side to these leads. It can be kind of hard to see with the swelled ones, but just make sure you go in from the right side. So here you see I have the um, lead finally removed, and I'm just going to go through and clean up the sides of this key, take the, the slightly uh, swelled and corroded lead, um, and make it flush with the rest of the key, and take any extra um, protruding wood and trim it down as well. Got a nice sharp, plain blade. The lead does a number on the blade, but um, as does the wood, but keep your tools sharp. The blade's set fairly shallow, so it's not taking too big of a cut. I find it a lot easier to just, where these keys are so small, and where I don't really have a proper bench set up, to just pull the key across the much heavier plane. Um, it can be kind of hard. It jumps a little bit especially where I have it on this folding table and on a trash can. 
I'm just tipping stuff off my makeshift bench setup and then probably go through after and clean these keys up with a um, scraper just a little bit more. Some of them need a little bit of work, they warp just a little bit. So there you see a little bit of detail on the hole with the lead removed and you can see where I've cleaned off some of the corroded and swelled lead on that rear key lead. Key number 23, it's a G. Um, those mortises and uh, felt bushings, especially the ones underneath the key, will probably need some work as well. Now we'll just show um, putting this key in and show the clearance between the neighboring um, key number 22 and 24 that um, A flat and F sharp. It's much more responsive now, like a, a historically authentic harpsichord should be. Um, and there's plenty of clearance between those two keys, they move very easily. Not all of the keys are like this, some of them will need some work. So thanks for watching, subscribe if you want to see more. Um, hopefully make a lot more videos in the coming few weeks.